Today we're going to be shooting a classic, the Mini 14. Stick around. Thanks for joining us on Shoot of the Series. I'm Ed Thorell from Firearms Education and Training, and we're back. We've been off for a little while, but today we're going to be shooting at the new Mystery Range, and we're pretty happy about it. Um, we'd like to thank all of our subscribers for giving us traction and keeping everything going. It's because of you that we're able to do this. Uh, we really appreciate uh, the, the community we're starting here. We'd, we'd like you all, you know, not just like and share, but also subscribe and be a part of the action, be a part of the community. Um, today we're going to be talking about the Mini 14, which is an absolute classic. It's more than 45 years old in design. It's uh, been around. First came out in 1973. It's, it's a great rifle. It's right up there with the AR-15 in terms of being um, something that's the go-to for a lot of people. It's been used by law enforcement, by military in different parts of the world, and it's basically a lightweight semi-automatic. It fires the 5.56 or the 2.23. Uh, like I said, it came out in 1973, introduced by Sturm Ruger. Um, and then during the 80s, it, it went through several um, reworks to where they introduced the ranch rifle, which is what this is. And the ranch rifle came with... Uh, uh, basically built-in scope mounts and a deflector so that you wouldn't have to worry about the brass hitting the bottom of the scope. Also in the 80s, they introduced the Mini 30, which has become very, very popular. And that's actually chambered in the Russian 7.62x39 round. That took off because the, that particular round is very close ballistically to the 3030, and as a result, it's a really good deer rifle. So the Mini 30 joined the Mini 14 family and it's been going strong. Um, now, also uh, later on in 1985, basically every Mini 14 became uh, redesigned and only sold as the ranch rifle. So now they only come with integrated uh, scope mounts. And by 1987, they, they also uh, thickened up the barrel, they accurized it and made it a more um, accurate rifle going from about a two inch MOA down to about a one inch MOA. So it's real competitive within, um, you know, a, a real functional ranch rifle that's a, a great truck gun and it's got a lot of followers. The, the controls on it are fairly simple. And for those that are uh, in the know, it resembles the old uh, Army M14. So if you have a Mini 14, the takedown is gonna be very, very similar. There's some small differences, but if you could run an, uh, an M1A or an M14, the Mini 14 is going to be no surprises. It's got a very similar, um, uh, the slide is going to run off the same, racking from the side. You're also going to see that down below, it's got the same type of safety. If the safety is back, it's on, safety's forward, it's off. And then you also have the same type of magazine release that is also very common on, on, the, on the M14. So it's, it's a great package um, that's already built on a, an established design. And because of that, it's got a lot of versatility. You can get these in lots of different features. You can get them in blued, you can get them in stainless. Um, in terms of stocks, you can get them in wood. You can get them in a laminate. Um, you can also get them in a fiberglass. This particular one is a stock that came from Ho Hogue. So this is a Hogue overmolded stock. And I really like it. It's got a nice uh, rubberized finish. So it's not gonna be real slippery, but you can also drop it, kick it around. It's not gonna take a whole lot of abuse. And um, otherwise, it's just a really good rifle. So in a couple minutes, we're gonna put a few rounds down range. So stick around, see the main event. On behalf of Shoot of the Series, we wanna thank you all for watching and tuning in. If you really like what we're doing, come find us on Patreon and consider partnering up with us.
And we're back. We've got the Mini 14 all ready to fire up here. I just wanted to kind of go through a little bit about, you know, how we load it, uh, how the safety works, and how, how it all works together. Uh, we're going to start off, we've got a 10-round box magazine, which is pretty much standard. You're going to notice right at the very end, there's a small hole on the end of the magazine. And that little hole matches up with a dowel that's right inside of the uh, magazine well. So what you have to do is you have to start by putting it at an angle, like so, getting it to where it mates up on that dowel, and then it rocks back into position. Pretty basic. Um, in terms of safety features, we, this is your safety. We went over this once before. And if the safety is to the rear position, the safety is on. If you just flick it forward, the safety is off. And then the control for removing the magazine is right here. So beyond that, the only other real controls are gonna be the charging handle. And because the charging is, handle is already to the rear, all we have to do to get this thing ready to fire is pull the charging handle to the rear let it go forward, bolt goes home, fresh cartridges in the chamber, and this is ready to fire. All right, flipping the safety off. I'm on target. All right, that's 10 rounds. Rifle's safe and clear. We're all good to go here. It's always a joy shooting the Mini 14. It's, it, it's, it's a great rifle. It's definitely a classic. Um, it's got a lot of great features. Not much recoil, still a lot of power. It'll pretty much do anything an AR-15 will do. It also makes a really good uh, compromise. If you want to get, get into a rifle, that doesn't have a lot of the same um, issues with compliance in California. The, the Ruger Mini 14 is basically just a rifle. It doesn't look like anything scary, it doesn't freak people out, so it makes it a good choice if you're trying to be a little bit more sensitive to people that might not get it. Um, if you're looking to get into one, you're going to probably spend somewhere between eight and nine hundred dollars and it's still a great value. Uh, I, I can't say enough good things about the Ruger, except I don't get enough to shoot it nearly often enough, but maybe now that's gonna change. Anyway, stick around because we're getting into our new favorite segment, Shooter Shout Out. Yeah. Our first shout out goes to Peter Jordan, who enjoyed the video, Finding the Right Firearm for You. Pete says, excellent overview. Very helpful to new gun buyers like me. Well, Pete, thank you very much. The whole point of us doing these reviews is to try to make your lives a little bit easier so you're getting the right stuff the first time. So we appreciate you watching. Pete, thank you much. Um, our next shout out goes to Kestrel Media Official. And he really enjoyed safety tips for new gun owners. He writes, you're a great host and trainer. No BS, but still owning a passion for teaching that you preach. I wish you the best of luck. Nice work. Gonna watch them all. Signed, Zach. Hey, thanks, Zach. We sure appreciate your comments. Um, Kestrel Media Official, great name. We appreciate that, too. Um, we're always working on safety. Uh, you can't overemphasize it. Anytime you stop thinking about safety is when, you know, the fickle finger of fate is going to slap you around and make you regret it. So we appreciate your comments. Um, thanks for noticing. That means other people are too. Now, uh, we appreciate all the comments and we want you to keep them up. And we want you to comment. You never know when it might be your comment that gets read on the next uh, segment of Shooter Shoutout, so it's appreciated. You can find us all on our various social media, but more importantly, like, 
share and subscribe. Become part of the show. Become part of the community. We appreciate you all for watching. Once again, my name is Ed Thorell from Firearms Education and Training. And on behalf of the staff at Shooter the Series, y'all take care.